Hey, what's up team? It's Joe Mill here with Killer Miller Q. We are back for another good cook. I got the Green Mountain Grill all fired up. We busting out the rotisserie and we're gonna be knocking out a little chicken shawarma. Let's go. Alright team, you see what we got here. We are working with the ingredients. You see what we're coming with and we're going to put together this shawarma marinade. So we are 24 hours before and uh, we're going to go through with basically uh, what you're going to need on today's rundown. First off, we're going to be starting with this chicken. For the most part, I had a pack of boneless, uh, skinless chicken thighs. I did have a couple chicken breasts that I went ahead and halved and uh, cut them nice and thin, adding them in there and I mixed them in there in between just to kind of fatten me up. But uh, pretty much the boneless, skinless chicken thighs is the way to go. Other than that, we got some of that red cayenne pepper. I believe what we got about uh, three fourths of a, a, tab a tablespoon of the uh, red cayenne pepper. Same with the ground cumin. Same with the turmeric. We got ground coriander. I'll make sure I put the full uh, description of what I use in the uh, list. You got some ground cloves. You got paprika. We're going to be using a whole lemon in there. A little bit of salt and pepper mixed up. And I got about a half of a red onion along with about five garlic cloves and some good old fashioned olive oil. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I drain this off. I already cleaned those off and took off a little bit of that nastiness and uh, get rid of a little bit of the moisture. And we're going to go ahead and hit them with some of this salt and pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and take all my dry ingredients and start blending them together. All right, so we got that little salt and pepper over there on that uh, chicken right there. I went ahead and mixed up all my dry ingredients. So, you know, we got us a nice looking rub here, looking real Middle Eastern or whatever have you, Mediterranean, whatever. But uh, pretty much now we're going to be adding this on and kind of mixing that around. Be careful not to break up your chicken too much. You want to keep this in as big a pieces as you can for the skewer. But uh, we're going to go ahead and now mix some of that dry rub directly onto the chicken. Okay, so your chicken should come out looking something, something like that. Don't got to be completely perfect or nothing like that because we still about to transfer this over to the bag. I like to get all my dry stuff on there first so it can really go ahead and uh, adhere to that meat a little bit. And then we're going to come back. We're going to come with this oil. We'll come with those lemons and that lemon juice. I'll throw in the garlic and the onions. And then pretty much we'll marinate it in that bag overnight. Peekaboo. That's what it look like. Like I said, literally this ain't nothing but a marinade, so we could have mixed all those wet ingredients, all those dry ingredients together and just thrown the chicken in there. I like to get that seasoning directly on my chicken and then uh, come back with all the wet ingredients and stuff in the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and seal this out, take the air out, and then um, over the next 24 hours, every time I go by the fridge, I'll flip this around, massage it a little bit. We'll let this hang out. I'll see you back tomorrow and we'll get this thing assembled. So now that we are the day of, the chicken's been hanging out for 24 hours and we're going to go ahead and throw this together before we actually start cooking so that way it's got plenty of time to marry. We're just going to make us a quick little easy yogurt sauce. Um, you can kind of develop these to the taste in exactly the way that you want it, but basically all we got over here is a little bit of um, plain Greek yogurt, some fresh garlic. I was out of... Um, fresh parsley so I actually have some uh, dry freeze uh, parsley so I'm using some of that but definitely go fresh if you can some cumin a little bit of lemon juice and then a little bit of salt and pepper nothing too crazy we're gonna throw all of this in and we're gonna whip this up and toss it back back into the fridge just like that that's pretty much what you should be looking like hopefully I ain't getting too much sun glare because it is bright and hot out here like normal but uh this tastes great super light refreshing nice little lemon zing on there um, I added a little extra salt from what I had already put on there you know give it a taste see what exactly where your taste buds lie but it should have a nice fresh lemony garlic flavor just a little something to accompany that chicken you can also use this as a little dip to go ahead and go with your um, pita um, in there or like some cucumbers or tomatoes or whatever have you but we're gonna wrap this up it's gonna taste even better later so that's why I wanted to get this done early throw a little cellophane over this and this is going in the fridge all right it's game time as you can see i got 24 hours in on this chicken this is going to be beautiful right here good marinade you smell it through the bag pretty much now what we're going to be doing is uh getting this up off of here and we're going to be loading up one of our skewers or our skewer 
Uh, I like to go ahead and place this skewer um, in my pit already, figure out where my middle is going to be so I got one already locked in, and then from there we're going to be building it right after that. We're going to get all of these pieces out of here nice and easy, try not to break them apart too much, and I'm going to lay them out pretty much flat, and then pretty much, and I'll show you a couple of them. Uh, this is going to be a messy job, so I got me a pan to kind of catch a lot of this underneath. We're going to be stretching this chicken right over this skewer and we're going to be kind of doing it back and forth almost making like an x pattern or a t um, one going this way and then one going that way we're going to basically stack this all on top of each other but first things first i'm gonna grab my uh red onion and that's going to be the butt so let me go chop that up bring that out and i'll show you how it looks when we get it together all right i'm about halfway there i wanted to just kind of give you a shot of what it's looking like here Got my red onion down there. Keep the back, I didn't cut that so that way it can stay nice and strong. That's my butt of everything and kind of the bottom of this bun if you want to look at it. And pretty much we're just going to be pushing it all the way down, going back and forth, left and right. I don't know if you can see that super great. You'll see a little bit more as I uh, get back to my other good hand on here. Let me put it down. Uh, and now let's switch and look this way. There we go, you can see you got one going up and down here then you got that one behind it going left and right and pretty much we just kept that pattern going all the way back and forth as many as we could we try to make sure that we got to poke through there when the top one skewers come through they're gonna make everything nice and tight and we're gonna basically get us a nice bound uh, a bound of meat with a little knotty niblets that's gonna be on all on the outside it's gonna char up real nice i did also uh, i don't know if i said spray a little bit of pam all over this whole thing just so it can come off of there nice and easy. But I'm gonna finish this up. I'll let you see the finished product. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we got this pellet grill up at 10. All right, baby's ready to rock. Put the other uh, piece, well actually I think this was the top. Uh, put the other piece on the top. Basically kind of flip flopped them back and forth the whole way. This baby's ready to go on the skewer. It's gonna get nice and knobby. It's gonna be nice. I'm gonna start this off respectfully low. Uh, even though we probably increased the temperature a little bit later um, That way I can kind of let everything more or less kind of get done together versus just charring the hell out the outside And then the inside still not being done. So uh, 300 is what we gonna do. Let's get over here and Let me get these pellets out Now today for these pellets we still using these uh, Kings for signature uh, Hardwood pellets that I got from Costco super cheap. I want to say it was like maybe $13 for this bag. That's like a uh, 40 50 pounds by far a super deal oak hickory maple and cherry i've used this on a few things and i said i was going to wait for a while i'm probably on about my fourth cook before i would actually do a review on them but i can tell you now these are money and when i go this week i will be grabbing me another bag um when i get my clean up and i, I clean this uh thing out and vacuum it out i'll let you know if it seems like it's a lot more ash than normal but as far as the flavor and the smell and the smoke that it's giving off uh i have no complaints hey team i want to jump in here real quick and let you know if you are new to the channel take a second to go to that bottom right corner and subscribe check out some of the other videos that you've already missed and other than that for everybody else keep tuning in we are almost at a thousand subscribers we got a nice announcement coming up soon we'll clean some things up but before then let's get back to the work so we got those pellets rolling steady freddy at 300 so like i said they definitely hold temp and everything we got this baby on the skewer man it already smells good all that deliciousness so we're gonna get these nice charred bits on the outside i can see it flopping around a little bit they're gonna tighten up a little bit once it gets to cooking i'll start this off at 300 and uh we'll probably push it up a little bit towards the back end one last thing i almost forgot while wow, this might not give me the perfect reading i am gonna roll with my old meat stick x in here today just to kind of give me an idea where we at um i want to end up getting this thing in the inside to roughly around i got a mostly dark meat in there about 170 although some of these outside bits are going to be done a little bit earlier but this kind of helped me out all right this is about one of the first check-ins at least the first one you're gonna get i peeked at it one time check me out check me out we about an hour and a half in still rolling at that uh 300 chicken's looking great you're starting to see some good looking char getting in there still dripping off and uh my meat stick is giving me about roughly 120 more towards the center so uh, we still got a ways to go i'm not gonna worry too much about the temp i like what we're doing Alright, so I pumped it up to 325 last time we was in there and I did hit it. Ooh, we look at it just basting itself. Look at that, look at it. Let me get in there close for you. Check that out. Oh yeah. 
And what we're looking for is a lot of that crust, like we see right over there and right on there. And pretty much what I've been doing is just hitting it with a little bit of this uh, olive oil, which is pretty much just a straight olive oil that can spray out the can, which is pretty nice. Just to keep it a little moist, keep it nice and browning up well. I like this too because it fans out well. Don't gotta waste too much. I'm gonna let it keep on basing itself. It says, uh, but I'm pretty much at about 140. I like the color I'm getting. I'm gonna kick it up a little bit more than 350. We're gonna finish it out. All right, as you can see, I kicked this thing up to about 375 slow increments so I can get me some nice, good char. We're about three hours and 20 minutes in. Check it out. Me stick was said I'm looking pretty decent on the inside. I already came back, checked it with my Thermal Pro. I'm looking pretty good. Now, uh, normally I could have just went ahead and threw this rack right under here and then just kind of, just like they would do, go ahead and cut off some of those nice crunchy nubules and then kind of let it keep on cooking all the way through the middle. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is bring this off so I can make it nice and pretty. We better hurry up and get this thing going for dinner. There it is. Check it out. There go that sauce that we made. Got it nice and married nice and flavorful don't need a whole lot of that so we went ahead and chopped it all up got it all together started off with the bottom of that pita um i like the what's that papa pita i'll make sure i show that pita they're my favorite pitas by far warm that up a little bit in the skillet started off with a little bit of that um yogurt sauce that we made a good heaping amount of that chicken some good 50 50 spring mix some chopped up tomatoes some chopped up cucumbers and a little bit of feta along with some red onions and uh, for good taste, we go ahead and throw us a little salad off to the side. You can also use a little bit of that dip there. Needless to say, I'm ready to get my taste on. All right, team. We got that thing done. Roughly three and a half hours. Kicked it up to about 375 on the back end to really try to get some crisp. You seen what we got? This thing came out great. I've already uh, told you how I put together this pita, so I'm not going to bore you. That sauce got a lot of good kick to it, so you don't got to go too crazy on that. Just a little bit go a long way. But I'm looking forward. I'm going to smush this down a little bit. Uh, and we'll see if we can't get us a good bite here on cam. Like always, shouts out to my boys over at Black Smoke Barbecue. Appreciate all y'all for following along. Let's dig into this thing. Mmm. Mmm. Wait a minute. Mmm. Check out the crust on there. Well, I try to get all of this down. Woo! Mmm. That chicken is phenomenal. Reminds me a lot of that jerk flavor. Definitely a redo. And I'm definitely going to enjoy my dinner tonight. Even that little salad. Appreciate y'all following along. Let's catch y'all next week. Peace.